Android 11 is here, well, at least in developer preview form. It's only February, but already Google has unveiled the first ever Android 11 build for developers on Pixel 2 or later. This version is super early though, so Google doesn't recommend using it on your daily driver. Nevertheless, there's plenty to get stuck into. We've done some digging, and here are all the Android 11 features that you need to know about so far. The chat bubbles feature was supposed to be coming to Android 10 before it was sidelined halfway through development and moved to the developer options menu. But it's back on Android 11, and the idea here is basically a system-wide version of Facebook Messenger's chat heads feature, floating bubbles that let you hop between conversations without jumping into the app directly. You'll still need to go back to the app to use all of its various features, but Bubbles is a great way to have a conversation with someone without having to juggle multiple apps in the foreground. It will require developers to update their apps with the Bubbles API though, so be prepared for a little bit of a wait. Another chat-related feature, Android 11 introduces a dedicated conversations section in the notification shade, similar to how Android 10 broke out notifications into noisy and silent. With this feature, you'll see any ongoing conversations you have across various messaging apps. Just like with Bubbles, the idea here is to make it as easy as possible to keep in touch with your contacts no matter what else you're doing. There's another big notification change too, that's the ability to send images directly from a notification. If an app supports copy-paste for images, you'll be able to insert pictures and send them with your messages without having to open the full application. We can't demo this explicitly just yet because it's not enabled in any of the current publicly available Google apps, but it does seem like it'd be a neat way to avoid cluttering up your internal storage with downloads when all you want to do is copy a photo from one app to another. Android 10 overhauled the permission system, and there are more changes coming in Android 11. The first developer preview introduces one-time permissions, an additional option to let an app use sensitive permissions like location, camera, or recording, just this one time. If an app tries to use that permission at a later date, it'll need to, well, ask for your permission once again. It's a simple but very effective change, and means you can give permissions on occasions where it makes sense, without giving an app carte blanche to do whatever it wants in the future. So let's say you have the camera app open on your phone and you're either recording a video or trying to compose a photo. Everything is going smoothly until you're interrupted with an annoying notification buzz, potentially ruining the shot by distracting you and vibrating the camera and just making things look blurry or shaky. To stop this from ever happening again, Android 11 introduces new APIs that mute vibrations from ringtones, alarms, and notifications anytime the camera app is open. Here's one for the frequent flyers. In Android 11, turning on airplane mode won't disable Bluetooth. Why is that a big deal? Well, if you've ever been sitting on the runway listening to music or a podcast, and the time comes to turn on airplane mode, doing so would also cut off your Bluetooth earbuds and wearables. It's a minor inconvenience, but if you do fly a lot, it's a fairly annoying thing to have to deal with. In Android 11, no more. Toggling airplane mode will keep your Bluetooth stuff connected. The next thing smartphones are set to eliminate is your physical driver's license, and to that end, Android 11 supports secure storage and retrieval of sensitive ID documents, including ISO 18013-5 mobile driving licenses. Before you get too excited, this doesn't mean you'll be able to add your existing license to your phone right away and be good to go. There's still plenty of red tape involved with various governments, but once digital driver's licenses are the norm, Android 11 ensures your phone can support them. Scoped storage is another feature originally planned for Android 10, and actually implemented in some of the early preview builds, but ultimately it was held back from the final release. It returns in Android 11 as a way to stop apps running roughshod over your phone's internal storage. Basically, instead of having access to everything on your phone's media storage, apps targeting Android 11 will get their own siloed storage area. Google's made improvements to make the transition easier for developers, and like I said, the change will only affect apps targeting Android 11, so older apps won't immediately break as soon as your phone gets the update. This one sounds complex, but it's actually pretty simple. In Android 11, Android's biometric security API, the bits that handle fingerprint and face unlock, can now specify the strength of the biometrics involved. For example, a fingerprint or 3D face scan might be seen as strong, and a simple 2D face scan from a single front-facing camera might be seen as weak. App developers can then decide to require some features like online banking to ask for a stronger level of authentication. Meanwhile, less important features might not need such strong biometrics. 5G is coming this year, and by the time Android 11 hits the mass market, it will be very much a mainstream feature. So Android is getting ready for 5G with new APIs, including a new feature to estimate the level of bandwidth without running a speed test. Android 11 apps can also intelligently detect whether a 5G connection is truly unlimited or not, which for those of us who aren't on an unlimited connection should help us from blowing through our data allowances. Hole punch and waterfall displays like those in the Galaxy S20 and Huawei Mate 30 phones are here to stay, and Android 11 includes new APIs to handle these kinds of screens. App developers can find out where pinholes exist in the display and intelligently manage the space around the edge of a waterfall panel. 
Makes a lot of sense, and it's easy to see how some apps might want to avoid putting important controls around the edge of a phone like the Huawei Mate 30 Pro here. And finally, a couple of Pixel-flavoured bonus features. First up, there's a new gesture in the Pixel 4's Motion Sense feature for pausing your music, in addition to the existing two for skipping backwards and forwards through tracks. And a hidden wireless power-sharing screen hints that the upcoming Pixel 5 might support this feature for wirelessly topping up headphones, watches, or even other smartphones. On Pixels, there's also an option to increase the screen sensitivity if you're using a screen protector, and Google's phones finally have a native screen recorder as well. You've been able to do this via the command line since way back in Android 4.4, but it's great to see that it's available for everyone as of Android 10. That's it for now, six developer preview builds are planned for Android 11, with the first beta arriving in May likely coinciding with the Google I.O. developer conference. Based on Google's roadmap, we can probably expect the final version of Android 11 to hit sometime in August. Stick with us to see what's new in future preview versions of Android 11, and subscribe so you don't miss all our upcoming coverage. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.